Jonathan Lee Riches investigates. I have some new information about James Curtis Leonard. James Curtis Leonard. Let's talk about him. First, four college students brutally stabbed inside a home, Moscow, Idaho, during the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022. Police have made no arrests. They haven't identified any suspects. Let's talk about James Curtis Leonard. I made a video about Mr. Leonard, and you need to go check this video out. It has a lot of details about maps of where James resides. It's interesting, but let's talk about him, right? I got some new information about what specifically this guy got arrested for. This man just got arrested yesterday. And I want to share the information, specifics on what he did, and we will discuss. This is a news report that just came out. I want to share with everyone. Moscow man booked into Latal County Jail on multiple felonies. A 39-year-old Moscow man was arrested on multiple felony charges late last night after allegedly injuring two family members and cutting himself with a knife. Notice his picture there with cuts on his arm and a blue bluish type bandage. According to probable cause affidavit, James Curtis Leonard was charged with domestic battery with Traumatic injury, aggravated assault, attempted strangulation, and felony injury to child following the incident in the 600 block of Palouse River Drive. Leonard has a previous criminal history, with, which includes second-degree murder for the June 2007 shooting death of Tyler Pace Lee near Genesis. He was 24 years old at the time he shot the 25-year-old Moscow man multiple times after an argument. Leonard pled guilty to the charge and was sentenced to prison, but was released early on probation, according to reports. The document states the reporting party walked out of the home when law enforcement arrived and an officer could see the woman had blood on her nose and mouth and multiple areas of her head were covered in blood. She also reportedly had blood on her vest and a large part of her left hand was covered in blood. Leonard was in a bedroom still armed with a knife. Based on the report of James acting violent, violently while armed with a knife and based on the female being covered in blood, I drew my pistol and entered the home. I loudly identified myself as Moscow PD and told James to come out of the bedroom with his hands up. After a short time, James walked out of the bedroom. I could see blood on his face and head, a, blood, a long bloody cut on his left forearm, and, and blood on both hands. The affidavit said Leonard did it as instructed and was placed in handcuffs. The officer checked him for weapons and found two knives in his right pants pocket. I removed both of these and felt more, two more hard objects in his pocket. I removed the lighter and a commercially packaged uh, marijuana joint from his pocket. The document states one of the alleged victims told law enforcement that Leonard was heavily intoxicating, having consumed around a half a bottle of gin during the evening. He had been working out, working on his truck in the driveway, and a woman, woman was in the living room on the phone with the internet company. James walked into the living room, saw her on the phone, and began accusing her of cheating on him. James slammed his phone on the ground and began screaming at her, the document says. A young adult female and teen female were in the living room at the time, along with a young adult male and baby. After yelling at the woman, James began yelling at the others in the living room. After a period of time, James made a statement implying he was going to off himself and walk into the bedroom. She went into the bedroom to check on James, who had a history of cutting himself, and she found James actively cutting his wrist with his green automatic knife. The affidavit said the woman sat down next to Leonard, who allegedly turned and struck her in the head with his closed fist. The woman later reportedly told an officer that Leonard's knife was in the closed fist when he allegedly struck her, which officials say reinforced his hand as he struck the woman. James then began to choke the woman from behind, wrapping his arms around her and applying pressure with the chokehold. Uh, she said she had difficulty breathing and for a second she could not breathe. The teen entered the room at the time and she tried to hit James with a lamp to prevent him from strangling the woman. The young woman's boyfriend entered the room and while holding the baby and pulled her out of the room, the affidavit states, then 
They then left the room and went into a neighbor's home. After Leonard was reportedly hit with the lamp, the male victim was able to free herself from his grasp, but he allegedly pushed her back onto the bed, climbing on top of her and continuing to strike her in the head with the fists. As she was trying to fight off James, he bit her on her hand, drawing blood. He then pinned her down on the bed by pressing his forearm against her throat, the document says. The teenage female then entered the bedroom, jumped on the bed, and tried to push Leonard off the woman while screaming for help for him for him to stop. He then allegedly grabbed her, threw her against the dresser, and began striking her with his closed fist, the officials say. I later spoke with the teen, and she told me James punched her with a closed fist in the face, head, and arms around 12 times. James also kicked her and pulled her by the hair. She complained of se severe pain all over her body, especially her left arm and side where she was where she was thrown against the dresser, according to the PC affidavit. Around the time, Moscow Fire Department medics arrived on scene and treated the in uh, individuals for their injuries. After being arrested and placed in the back of the patrol car, Leonard allegedly told an officer that the gas tank of on his truck fell on top of him, which is how he got that large cut on the arm. I pulled out a green automatic knife, which I took off his person, opened the knife, and showed him the blood on the tip. James said the blood was his, but denied cutting himself. He also denied striking the adult female. The affidavit says Leonard was booked into the Lata County Jail. K-O-Z-E News. So yeah, he had a knife, and he did some bad acts on his own family. Sounds like a domestic issue. But was it? You know, the same time that he gets arrested, then they come out with the body cam footage of the incident that happened right by the home of the stabbings at 3.01 a.m. And then the release of this white Hyundai Elantra that is, that is missing. Now, in my last video about James, I shared that he lives right off of Palouse, Palouse, and that was shared in the article I just showed you, right off Palouse, and that was one area where authorities were looking for surveillance, and you notice with the arrest that he just did, he started cutting himself and everything like that, is that kind of like, I'm not saying it is, but could have been like a ruse to cut himself, just in case he gets called about injuries, or you know, just in case he gets questioned about maybe the four you know, the, the, the four victims of stabbing. So he stabs himself and kind of uses that as an excuse to keep investigators off him about the stabbings. Do you get what I'm saying? Kind of like a ruse. Not saying that the probability of that is slim, but there is a there is still a slim chance, right? They say any small chance is a chance. But this guy here, you know, is bad news. He's already done bad acts in the past and got probation for it. You know, he didn't you know, accept the responsibility, but, you know, he got probation and violated probation. So he's in trouble again. He's in trouble again. This seems like a big deal for what he did, just the rage. But why did he do it? Was it alcohol or is there something more? I think police at least have to, you know, should talk to this guy, vet him, find out where he was on November 13th. Do you think he's involved in any way? I, you know, I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you watched my prior video. I'm sure a lot of you have been Googling around, looking into research into this guy. Do you think he's involved with this case in any way? What do you think should be done to this guy? You know, what do you think, how police should interrogate him, talk to, or just let it go? I think considering that a case is unsolved, I think he needs to at least be questioned. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. I'm covering true crime on this case and bringing you analysis and other key players, you know, individuals that might be connected, might not, just throwing names out there, throwing, you know, the key is here is this case is unsolved. No one knows what happens. So lo no stone left unturned, like the Moscow PD chief said, no stone left unturned. That's my philosophy will not rest until whoever did this is found. Whoever did this single or multiple amount of people, I know police are looking for individual or individuals, plural, who are in this white Hyundai. Who knows? Could be more people involved or associates or people that helped with the cover-up. The cover-up. 
It's always the cover-up, too. Remember, it's the crime and the cover-up. Everyone be safe. God bless.